Do you shot it? And coming up next, it's a UFC welterweight division oh. matchup. Well, pretty much every time out in the UFC, DC, this man has put on a striking clinic, and that is his methodology coming in here tonight. He'll try to keep the fight on the field. And that's why we tune in, right? That's why we tune in. We tune in to see guys that are dynamic. We tune in for the speed. We tune in for the knowledge of the striking game, the ability to set traps, the ability to find the jab, the ability to find the right hand, the right kick, the left kick, the knees, the elbows. He truly uses every weapon that he has in his arsenal to I'm try and score. finish his opponent. You make one mistake, oh, night's so. over. You cannot do I do? Do make I mistakes against a guy think that I'll has the step striking up? accuracy yeah, yeah, this guy right here. And the jab is not oh. as underutilized a weapon as it was in MMA, say, five or seven, seven years ago, but he's got yeah, as good a jab as anyone so in the realize. business, and that is where all of his striking flows off of. We'll see how it goes for him in this matchup tonight. All right, so here he is, the ubiquitous Nick Diaz. It's hard to quantify his contribution to mixed martial arts. I will just lead by saying that this man brought a lot of fans into this sport, and when he fights, building still packed to the mountains. Yes, absolutely. Nick Diaz has a fan base that will follow him through anything, and rightfully so. He won the Strike Force Welterweight Championship, defended it in a ton of crazy fights, knocking out Paul Daly, knocking out Marius Zoromskis, yeah. and then coming back to the UFC and getting wins over BJ Penn, fighting George St. Pierre, and then also sharing the octagon with Anderson Silva. So it was only big fights for Nick Diaz because he was such a star and such a draw. And sometimes people lose sight of just how good he was in his prime. 2008 to 2011, Nick Diaz won 11 consecutive fights. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a kickboxer, holding a professional record of nine wins, no losses. He stands five feet ten inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Sydney, Australia, Grandmaster. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of... 27 wins, 10 losses, and one no contest. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Body out of Stockton, California, Nick Diaz! And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean, our third man in the octagon for this one. Ready. Guard up here early. This man has won his last three fights, all of them by flush knockout. Each knockout more impressive than the last. We'll see if he can keep it going here tonight. Oh, really using his reach advantage there as he lands the punch, DC. Timing his shots nicely here, champ. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up and using a lot of diverse strikes. And that one was heavy. Yeah, you got over there, man. Oh, and there he goes, really? working off that jab again. How's your jab? I mean, the jab's nice. I love throwing the jab. But you realize that as MMA evolves, guys will start to fight behind a very educated jab. It's just like boxing. The most thrown punch, the first one you learn is a jab. Right. And in MMA, guys are starting to take that same approach because it is such an effective weapon. Beautiful body jab, right under the elbow. Big punch lands through the middle. the single. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Both fighters throw. Oh, he's now, his head's still attached to his body. The last time I saw an uppercut like that, it was Overeem versus Ndaku. And you know they still haven't found Alistair Overeem's head. All right, so there he goes, continuing to land that jab. When they put this highlight together, it's just going to be one head snapping back. It's going to be boxers going back, 
and watching this guy and going, wow, this is what a jab is supposed to look like. All right, so a nice shot there defensively to raise the guard and prevent any damage. Those hands never... Oh! He's in trouble. That one to stun him. Back to the feet. Oh, he might be out. Plans a good combination. Oh! Ooh, head kick lands. He's hurt. And he connects with a punch there. We'll see if he can follow it up. He landed that punch over and over again. What's he gonna do to follow up? Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got a press. Him. He's got to change that finish down now. the opponent saw it coming quite frankly so near perfect execution on the strike that ultimately the show, the show, the 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 right, let's take a look back at the replay it ends up a knockout but this was really a striking clinic from the moment they touched him. i mean a competitive fight that one guy finally found the shot that ended the fight but both of these warriors displayed a ton of heart one guy got the finish but neither guy should be disappointed in their performance Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has gone south in this contest at 4 minutes, 22 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by knockout, Red Master. Oh, there he is after a huge knockout win tonight. You go only have to put him Give me two seconds to find it, El Presidente, and I'll fucking follow you. Look like the creep I am. Coming up next, a UFC welterweight division matchup. So another big spot for this high-level wrestler here tonight. And the opposition knows what's coming, but more often than not in the UFC, they've been unable to stop. It's because since a little boy, he spent his life on the wrestling mat. And even though you start to prepare for it late, you cannot match his ability to train, his ability to focus, the idea that once he gets a hold of you, it only ends with him in top position. It does not matter if he has to get a high crotch. It does not matter if he needs to get I'm a single this leg or a double leg. Seems the like you. Is to get you to the it's floor, not. And he has been training his entire you, life. You see far from you. Yeah, he put it well. So I'm hoping that's you guys. So. Take downs and trips in his arsenal, and he'll try to put them to good use in this matchup here tonight. You fucking legend. Well, pretty much every time out in the UFC, DC, this man has put on a striking clinic, and that is his methodology coming in here tonight. He'll try to keep the fight on the field. And that's why we tune in, right? That's why we tune in. We tune in to see guys that are dynamic. We tune in for the speed. We tune in for the knowledge of the striking game, the ability to set traps, the ability to find the jab, the ability to find the right hand, the right kick, the left kick, the knees, the elbows. He truly uses every weapon that he has in his arsenal to try and finish his opponents. You make one mistake, night's over. You cannot make mistakes against a guy that has the striking acumen yeah. of this guy right here. And the jab is not as underutilized a weapon as it was in MMA, say, five or seven years ago, but he's got as good a jab as anyone in the business, and that is where all of his striking flows off of. We'll see how it goes for him in this matchup tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. 
Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a wrestler holding a professional record of two losses. He stands six feet one inch tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, C.M. Park! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a kickboxer holding a professional record of... And wins. No losses. He stands five feet ten inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, fighting out of Sydney, Australia, Grand Master. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Loving. The veteran Eve Levine draws the assignment here. young man's popularity absolutely soared on the strength of what he did his last time out. It was a win by flush knockout, kept his winning streak intact with style points, and now the challenges get decidedly more tougher. We'll see if he can keep the momentum going in what is unquestionably the biggest spot of his UFC career. Man, he's just got a great feel for the striking realm early in this one. The timing is on point. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up. All right, All right, so the commitment to the takedown pays off. After several failed attempts, he finally gets his first takedown. Now let's see what he can do with it. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very nice. Oh, what a punch. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by the center. So much for the new followers, boys. He does a Just fantastic job of entering, and once he gets to the takedowns, he does a great job do of securing top position and really getting damage off of his opponent. Man has his chin been tested early. Oh, he got him real good, too. CM Punk gets up again here, but he looks close. Wild take him down, cut him, take him down, cut him, over and over. Here in these takedowns. Timely defense there. Huge block for him. Nice punch there. And both guys really throwing with authority. Why, right, so there is the horn at time. You ready? You ready? Here we are, early round two. Lance 
and they separate. Nice play. Oh. He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh, he hurt him. Back to the feet. Oh! And just like that, the fight is over. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What a fight. Just an Absolutely gorgeous shot to spell the end for his opponent. Crowd is absolutely loving it. He gets the near perfect land. I'm not even sure his opponent saw it coming, but just the way he drew it up here tonight, saw that little crack of an opening and barged right through it to get the knockout. So there he is as the celebration continues. A huge knockout for him here tonight. That could hold up as one of the better knockouts of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve LeBing has called a stop to this contest at one minute, 50 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by knockout, Red Master. And there is the man of the moment, and what a moment this must be like for a professional athlete. Coming up next, a UFC welterweight division matchup. Well, well, he's one of the more accomplished strikers in this division. Sprawl and brawl, whatever you want to say, he's going to try to keep this fight standing tonight. It does not matter how he accomplishes it. All he wants to do is be on his feet and at range hitting you with the beautiful jab, staying away from the grappling exchanges. You don't accomplish all the things that this man has accomplished over the course of his career without understanding distance. He has great distance management, which then in turn allows him to land all these beautiful diverse kicks, spinning back kick, jumping high kick, so many things he possesses that he will try to use tonight in this fight. Yeah, if this turns into a kickboxing match tonight, most it's people over. believe, yeah, his opponent Big is in a world over, of trouble. All right, so here is your guy, Funky Ben Askren, one of the most accomplished collegiate wrestlers of all time when it comes to pinfalls. This is a guy whose skill set has translated very well to mixed martial arts and a very interesting UFC debut for Ben Askren. You have it no other way. Ben Askren won that fight against Robbie Lawler in the most Ben Askren type of way. Yes. With a bulldog choke, he got slammed on his head, didn't go out, got up and got a bulldog choke to finish. A two-time Hodge Trophy winner and wrestling, which is essentially the Heisman. He won that two years in a row on the Olympic team. I would wrestle oh, Ben oh. Askren myself when we were at the Olympic Games in Beijing, and you cannot oh, understand no. the strength and the awkwardness of Ben Askren until you have felt it. He is truly a special athlete. Our tale of the tape for this welterweight oh, fight. Both no. fighters identical in age, and they both possess a similar height and reach. Here is Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC. Walter White Division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. A kickboxer holding a professional record of 11 wins, no losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting in Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, Grandmaster. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist holding professional record of 19 wins, 3 losses, and 1 no contest. 
He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Ben Funky And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon is Eve Loving. The veteran Eve Levine draws the assignment here. Ready? His knockout streak really has been the stuff of legend, knocking out contenders left and right. He's won his last three, all of them by thrust knockout. Shades of Vitor Belfort back in 2013. Oh! Oh! He needs to start looking the face now because he's got to look very bad. On the next fight contract, I'm going to wrap it up, ladies and gents. Thanks for everything. You especially, Ben, my favorite and best fucking fan. Back to the feet. Oh, collar tie. Oh! What a okay. fantastic strike to go at the exact with a punch there. It's hard to recall a time in the past that his boxing looked this sharp. He's never looked this good. How about that shin? Quick entry here. Nice single leg entry. Rotates the hand outside to a high crotch. Oh, oh my God. He switched the lock to a high crotch. Rotated him and took him for a ride. That was a big takedown. Just over two minutes, round one. Way to hide that leg kick. a knee there. Nice deception there to get that knee to the target. Really good knee. Nice job of driving it right to the target. Oh. He's, He's hurt bad. Back to the feet. Now goes in and secures the takedown. That's my person, guys. Thank you very much. She's all right. And now he's got that tight. I'm going to turn it off for everyone. I'll watch you in bed. There. Favorite. Under a minute now to go in round one. Hip tosses him down. Now we'll see if he can advance position. I mean, right into side control. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Now he sees the triangle. And this could be trouble here. Looks like it's pretty tight. He's trying to work his head out of harm's way. It, it might be over. All right, so he postures up nicely done. Seconds here of round one. Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing bad. Oh, yeah. No pity pat to this guy. Uh, this guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strikes. All right, let's get you a replay from that previous round. It was the big knockdown courtesy of that kick that, that nearly closed the show for good. It almost closed the show, but nothing's more discouraging than when you get somebody hurt that bad and you don't shut the door. He has to go back to work now knowing that he's got about as tough a guy as, if, as he's ever had in front of him in the octagon tonight. Second round on the road. Head kick partially blocked. Look at him whip his hip into that kick. Right hand punched with the clinch. Wow. <laughs> Big powerful punch lands. Now we get back to range.
here is a high-level knockout, ladies and gentlemen. Crowd absolutely loving it. Just a perfect shot to end the fight. Landed flush. I'm not even sure his opponent saw it coming. So a huge, huge win for that young fighter here tonight. Well, another highlight for the real DC as we look back at that scintillating knockout. Yeah, but the whole fight, he was landing great strikes, kicks, punches. He was doing everything right until eventually he found the shot that ended the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Levine is going to stop for this contest at 45 seconds of round number two. Playing the winner by knockout, Red Master. Oh, there he is after a huge knockout win tonight. You go on the after party or what? I mean, I'm heading over there right now. G'day. How's it going, Gooey? Can you hear me? And coming up next, it's a UFC welterweight division matchup. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Well, it's always tough when you draw that high-level wrestler who has a lifetime of experience in a one-on-one -on -one competitive situation prevailing wisdom is he'll have the wrestling advantage in this one tonight. As his dad said, the moment he introduced him to the sport, he knew that he was made to be a wrestler. The kid slept in his headgear. He only wants to wrestle, and by doing that, he puts you in danger. He's constantly in your face, constantly trying to dig at your gas tank. He goes from transition to transition, single to double to high crotch. It does not matter the attack, he just knows that he will give you so much to process in terms of the wrestling that eventually he will get you to the ground. You ever sleep in your headgear? I sleep in my headgear. All the time. All the time. All right. Big one for him here tonight. Let's get to it. Prelims no more. Here he is making his way to the octagon. This is the first time in his UFC career he has worked his way to the main card. He has strung together some wins, looking at the rankings, and this guy appears like he belongs. A lot more eyeballs on him tonight. The audience is bigger. His popularity has grown leaps and bounds. We'll see if he can handle that pressure and perform the way he has that led to this main card slot here tonight. Our tale of the tape for this highly anticipated welterweight fight. More than a decade separates these two fighters when it comes to the age, with similar height and some differences in reach. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 15 wins, two losses. He stands five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Man Man. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A kickboxer, holding a professional record of 12 wins, no losses. He stands five feet ten inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Sydney, Australia. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata. You ready? Are you ready? Four oh, round one underway here. This will be his first fight on the main card, so that bears watching here tonight. There's no denying just how successful he's been on the prelims, but now on the main card for the first time, undeniably the highest profile. Oh! Oh! Oh, he might be out. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? Oh, straight right. 
I'm an identical twin. Two is better than one. He might as well double up on the jab. He did so effectively there. Doubling up. Oh! oh he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to keep that bit of a on his feet. Back to the feet. Now goes in and secures the takedown. I'm done. So Smashed him. To the drawing board for him, but for the winner, this is certainly exactly what he was looking for here tonight. Oh, well, we'll take a look back at the highlights. You know we're going to find that nasty head kick somewhere in this highlight rip. Just an incredible result for him here tonight. A very nice head kick to finish the fight, but don't ignore all the work he did with his hands and give credit to the opponent. The opponent I love these high kicks. Step it away. And in order to get a fight of the night like you got tonight, both guys have to be willing to participate. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Merliata has called a stop to this contest at 2 minutes, 30 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by knockout, Red Master. So the celebration is on with him and his team, and rightfully so. A monumental result tonight. All righty, on to the next, next opponent. And coming up next, it's a UFC welterweight division matchup. Here we go. Hopefully I beat him up. All right, well, he's one of the more accomplished strikers in this division. Sprawl and brawl, whatever you want to say, he's going to try to keep this fight standing tonight. It does not matter how he accomplishes it. All he wants to do is be on his feet and at range. Hitting you with the beautiful jab, staying away from the grappling exchanges. You don't accomplish all the things that this man has accomplished over the course of his career without understanding distance. He has great distance management, which then in turn allows him to land all these beautiful diverse kicks, spinning back kick, jumping high kick, so many things he possesses that he will try to use tonight in this fight. Yeah, if this turns into a kickboxing match tonight, so, most people so, believe, yeah, his opponent is in a so world of trouble. Well, this guy has truly made the takedown a thing of beauty in mixed martial arts with respect to yourself and George St. Pierre and the truly great takedown artists. This guy's closing the gap and, and entering that company in the eyes of men. Oh, absolutely, because he's done such a great job of timing takedowns. You didn't see, I haven't seen anyone so good at slipping a jab into a takedown since George St. Pierre. Right. He does a phenomenal job of getting from step one to step two before his opponent even realizes now he's in on my leg and if they do get their hips back immediately he's up into a foot sweep 
or a headlock or an inside trip. It's just so many different ways for him to get you to the floor that he will throw every single one at you every single time. And a lot of fighters talk about that wrestling maintenance and how hard it is, right, over the course of a career to continue to drill those things. He talks a lot about that, and that's why he's continued to realize success here in the UFC. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a kickboxer, holding a professional record of 13 wins, no losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting in Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, Grandmaster. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 25 wins, 10 losses, one draw, and two no contests. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Alex Cowboy Oliveira! And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the Octagon, Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata, your referee. You ready? here tonight so can he keep the momentum going as the challenges get stiffer keep the winning streak intact and of course try to get another win by knockout to take his popularity soon to win a level. nice punch Lance. i mean can you imagine having a reach advantage like this what a luxury it's a luxury i've never had one over the course of my entire career but fighting guys that are taller you struggle whenever they are very aware of such a massive advantage. This guy is going to try and use it tonight. Whoa! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go take that finish down now. There, huge block. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? So he lands a double jab there. He continues to work off of that weapon, and you felt like that was a big key for him coming in tonight. Very fight thus far. How's his opponent still stand? I mean, I have no idea. This fight is supposed to be over. And it might not be over now, but it's gonna be over very soon. Olivera's kick attempt, that one was blocked. Oh! And just like that, the fight is over! Holy smokes! What a performance! You knew if he landed that weapon repeatedly, it could be a short night for his opponent, but that was just one perfectly placed strike that his opponent candidly didn't even see coming. It landed flush, and the rest, as they say, is history. Big knockout win for him here tonight. Oh, we'll take a look back at the highlights. You know we're going to find that nasty head kick somewhere in this highlight rip. Just an incredible result for him. A very nice head kick to finish the fight. But don't ignore all the work he did with his hands. And give credit to the opponent. The opponent was in there every step of the way. And in order to get a fight of the night, like yeah, tonight, I'm tonight, watching. both guys have to be willing to participate. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Bergliata has called a stop to this contest at 2 minutes, 29 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by knockout, Grandmaster! So the celebration is on with him and his team, and rightfully so. A monumental result tonight. That is good. Goo is good.
You still using your PlayStation? And coming up next, it's a UFC welterweight division matchup. So this is going to be the last fight this episode, ladies and gents. Big thanks to everyone watching, whether you're watching live or after the fact, on Twitch or on YouTube. I appreciate it. Well, this is about as decorated a kickboxer as has come into this division in some time, DC. And if we get a kickboxing match tonight, he ain't losing. He is a championship-level kickboxer, a guy that can stand in the pocket and trade and kick and punch with anyone. He's constantly throwing things. From as close as you can get, he's comfortable throwing leg kicks. He will drive these into your body. But it's the aggressiveness and the ability and willingness to stand in the pocket and trade that makes him truly, truly special. I think that is what separates kickboxing, the high level yeah. from everyone else. He understands distance as well as any striker in this division. Of course, that is a byproduct of a lifetime of repetitions in the kickboxing space. So here is the Rio de Janeiro born former UFC lightweight champion Southpaw Rafael Dos Anjos back at UFC 185 shocked the masses with a bludgeoning of the former champion Anthony Pettis to become the UFC lightweight champion now a welterweight here is RDA making the walk once again tonight. Our tale of the tape for this welterweight fight. The Brazilian is 39. The Australian is 4. He will have a 2-inch reach advantage. And now for the particulars, we go inside the octagon where we find Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds of the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a kickboxer holding a professional record of... 14 wins, no losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Sydney, Australia, Grandmaster. And now he's his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner. This man is a grappler, holding a professional record of 31 wins, 15 losses. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Rafael Dos And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon is Dan Mergliata. So Dan Mergliata shares the cage. You ready? All right, here we go. I'm not going to enjoy this fight, I think, because he's probably going to try and take me down to the ground, and I don't like that. All right, here we go with round one. His knockout streak really has been the stuff of legend, knocking out contenders left and right. He's won his last three, all of them by flush. Oh! Block the head kick, I'll kick you in the body, mate. Fine. Crap. How does that miss? I miss, but he gets me. What? Is his head not attached to his body? Oh, nice connection there with a punch, DC. 
great time to land that one. Bullshit. What a great way of mixing up his attack. He did stay the course. He picked it up. He went Can you tell me he blocked that one too? Frustrated me. So a strong candidate for some bonus money there. A huge knockout for him here tonight. Near perfect execution. They'll be talking about this result for some time. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Bergliata has called a stop in this contest at three minutes, 13 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by knockout. Red Master. Well, he's smiling ear to ear, and why not after a knockout like that? I need to take it to the after party. Big thanks to everyone watching. Sorry, I got a little bit frustrated there at the end, but hopefully Hada does the right thing and cuts that out for us. Um, because, yeah, that was ridiculous. Big thanks to everyone watching. You guys have been great. I've been Brash Bandicoot, and...